I've seen so many different worldviews that it's hard to imagine that one can find hope in a system that leaves them empty and damaged. Somehow they manage to unify religion surrounding a planet, but they get salty when you speak the truth with biblical standards. Like they would believe anything that came along as long as it's easy and godless. High the truth and unrighteousness when it's made plain and obvious. Regardless of the fact that they break the very laws of logic, then call us ignorant and intolerant when we just being honest and say it's prideful for anyone to claim that there's an absolute with the math and that statement equals an absolute truth. You clean this circular reason, appeal to feelings for meaning. You should be speaking with the same conviction, tweak what you're thinking. It takes humility to submit to a system outside your framework, but it's really contingent on how independent your brain works. Continue to give in to inner cynical views, but when confronted, you just plummet. You can't stomach the truth. The Roman Catholic teachings. And uh, you will find inevitably. Hey, hey, the front, the front, the front. Do not touch that. Do not touch it. So shield their eyes. Well, you would just have to be pissed and do nothing about it. But you don't touch people's property. That's a crime. This is the fruit of the unbelieving worldview. Nothing but ignorance and violence. But what can you expect? So, like I was saying, ma'am, I'm sorry for the interruption. I would encourage you um, to check it out for yourself. Don't take my word for it. And then turn tail and get away from the Roman Catholic Church because they are leading people to hell by the thousands, by the millions. Um, this part, this is about abortion. And uh, the fact that that lady was uh, offended by that is just disgusting. That shows the depravity of the human heart, the exposure of darkness. This brutal act, which pulls off the death toll of about 1.5 million kids every year. You know, we had all sort of turmoil, and rightly so for the 3,000 that, that died in the towers on 9-11. But not any sort of anguish of heart or, uh, you know, sadness. Any, any pause for the one point, I mean, 3,000, 3 uh, 3,500 every day. Mm -hmm. So we have a 9-11 every day with the most defenseless. I mean, pick on someone your own size. So, but you freaking saying barbaric. that's all right, that abortion is okay to do? No, not at all. So what it's disgusting. So and I know the Catholic Church at least strongly opposes that. I, I applaud them for that, but anyway. It I want to also... It. Whoa. <laughs> Giving a shout out. <laughs> for real. For real style. That's a real shout out. Amplified. So, I wanted to... Uh... Bye. 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 Have a good day. You too. Happy Saturday, everybody. Happy Saturday. Lovely evening. Lovely day. Let me hear everybody say, woo! Make sure you praise God for the uh, still remaining freedoms that we do have in this country and praise them for this lovely weather too. So anyway, I was wanting to address the church a little bit because I do find more and more as I analyze my own heart and as I look at the state and condition of those who profess Christ, I am finding that Christ, uh, Satan is doing probably most of his work there. There's a lot, a lot of deception. And I need not only preach out to those people who blatantly reject Christ, I think I have to preach to the choir too. And that's sad, but it's true, as Metallica said. <laughs> sure, but true. Um, so we need to uh, consider, I think it was in Hebrews 11, which discusses what uh, true faith is. He's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And that, that kind of uh, speaks to the issue of uh, seeing temptation for what it is. It's a false promise. You know, if we really believed God, we would see the desires uh, and temptations in this life as so more minute to the desires we have for God. They would be like comparing, I don't know, turds to gold. And if you want to think about this rationally, um, if you are going to dive into the, the wiles of the flesh, I don't know what it is, whatever, name your sin. If that is your thing and, and, and that draws you in as a professing Christian, shame on you. Why does it? Why does not our love 
for and desire for God supersede that. That is but mere turds compared to the gold that is rewarded like Christ said he would do in Hebrews 11. He would reward us so much more bountifully than that will provide. F.D. Roosevelt, yeah? He said something similar. He was talking about uh, the, the situation of the times that we were facing in America when he was in office. And uh, I don't want to give the whole quotation, but basically, paraphrase, he was talking about how we need to give up and sacrifice things for the, the, the war so that we would have our freedom. He said, giving up luxury and creaturely comforts for freedom is not a sacrifice. People thought it was a sacrifice that, that you know the wives would have to go work in the, the metal mills to make bullets and I don't know, whatever they were doing. But that sacrifice was not really a sacrifice because it secured their freedom, so much, something way more valuable. And so when we talk about the rewards that we'll get in heaven for eternity, or even the rewards temporarily that we'll, we will also receive for obeying God as opposed to not, we will see that it's not really a sacrifice at all. So why do we continually look at it that way? And we should actually, really, not just as a metaphor, see it as a freaking pile of turds. We're gonna trade in uh, gold for poop? That's not right in the head. And that's basically what you have with the word repentance. It means a change of mind. <laughs> and I'm not, I, like I said, I'm preaching to myself on this one too. God has still got a lot of work to do with me. He says he will uh, be faithful in perfecting that work. That is sanctification. I'm looking for it more and more, although it is painful. <laughs> but like I said, and like the Bible says, we must put on the armor of God, which would uh, include the shield of faith, which is believing the promises of God over those of Satan or the flesh, the helmet of salvation is remembering our future hope. The shoes of the gospel of peace ground us in the past effect the gospel has already had on us. The belt of truth gives us specific rebuttals to sin, so on and so forth. So, what about the socks? The socks <laughs> just stink. They smell like sweat. <laughs> so, yeah, man, you guys just don't be lethargic in this war. Don't be hitting the spiritual snooze button. We don't have time for that. We need to be just all out, uh, you know, warfare on the deeds of the flesh. We are our own worst enemies. Look in the mirror. What does the Bible say? In the, the, uh, our Father says, uh, deliver us not unto temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. A lot, a lot of times we think of the, the world and its evils that are tempting to us, or the devil and his little whisperings in our ear. How about deliver us from ourself? It's our own nature that is the biggest problem. <laughs> deliver us from ourselves. He's saving us from not only his own wrath, but from ourselves. So see that for what it is. Look in the mirror, see your condition. You're all messed up, hair's messed up. You're not looking pretty. Don't go away from that mirror seeing yourself as clean. That's what the, the world does. We're all good people, they say. Well, no. And I'm not saying that the Ten Commandments are only the only laws of God, but or that God will even judge us by the Ten Commandments. That's not, necess that's not stated in Scripture. But we will be held accountable for our sins. And we know sin by the law, at least. You know, lying, stealing, etc. And you know, I think everybody does know, the darkness that is deep down inside. I know I'm broken, and in fact, the more uh, righteous God allows me to become, the more I'm aware of it. But I think uh, everybody at least knows to some small degree in the quiet moments, the alone time that they have with themselves. But what do, what do they do? They suppress the truth and unrighteousness.
This is a moral issue. This is not an intellectual issue. People develop rescue devices for their worldview, even though they've been shown the erroneous, illogical nature of it many times. And he might just say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I never knew you. I don't want that to be me. I don't want that to be you. That's my whole purpose for being out here. Okay? To glorify God through the proclamation of his truth and the gospel and through his truth in demolishing all silly worldviews. Decimate them to dust. That is my claim. That is my story, and I'm sticking to it. All other worldviews, apart from Christ, are stupid. Not just stupid, but morally bankrupt, and they will lead you to hell.